Welcome! I'm Steve Frears and I'll be sharing with you some of my research on Native American pictograph handprints in Southern California. There is often more there than meets the eye. So let's get started. My interest kind of dates back to a publication by Gerald Smith and Wilson Turner, a hodgepodge of rock art descriptions from Southern California. This book though did provide a very good launching point for my investigation that I'm going to share with you. They included a, a map in the book that shows the general distribution of rock art sites in Southern California and quite apropos they had the handprint motif signifying major sites in Western Riverside and Northern San Diego counties. A spectacular pictograph site it called Cal Riv 114 or Old Penny Ranch is shown in the picture that you see here. Gerald Smith and his wife Maxine are in the lower corner. What was interesting about this site is that they make a claim in the drawing that they made that the handprints in the lower right aspect of the pictograph panel are not real but they are drawn. Which really begs the question what do they mean by real? What's a quote-unquote real handprint? And how were they drawn? So this became the impetus for my investigation in this type of handprint. And that arrow shows you the, the ones in question. Let's look at the main panel. Here's a digital photograph. And we have technologies that allow us to enhance the boulder to kind of pull out and better reveal the pictographic elements. John Harmon, that's J-O-N, Harmon, uh, came up with a program called D-Stretch that helps people analyze pictographic art with greater ease. Now here's a D-Stretch enhancement of the same panel. I'm going to turn the panel a little bit so that we can see the handprints in question. The yellow arrow, arrow shows you the handprints that the author stated were drawn. And some people have commented they believe that they use some sort of yucca fiber paintbrush or something to paint those on the rock. Well, we're going to explore that. And we're going to use these handprints where the green arrow is showing to kind of make a case one way or the other. Now, here's a straight on view of that area that I had the green arrow pointing to. The handprints that you see that are quite bold. Those are known as simple impression handprints. Paint was applied to the hand itself and then stamped onto the rock. They were impressed. That's why I call them simple impressions. Sometimes the impression was rather vigorous. The handprint where the yellow arrow is indicating was hit rather ballistically and there's ejection splatter. So that was kind of a vigorous application. The much more faint simple impression hand print circled by the uh, orange line is contains some very interesting evidence that we're going to apply into our analysis of the adjacent handprint which is one of those that they claim were drawn. I use the term not drawn but stylized. Stylized handprints are those that have been embellished with a design in some manner and that's whatever that design intent was by the Native American who created it is then impressed onto the rock. That's what I call stylized handprints. But we're going to look to see if we can prove that. So all of us carry uh, one of the, the basic tools of this analysis and of course that's our own fingers and we know that we have dermal ridging on our hands and fingers to help facilitate gripping objects, particularly smooth objects. But these dermal ridges can in fact leave a fingerprint as we know by watching Agatha Christie films and so forth. But that's also the case in rock art. The next photo I'm going to show you an actual fingerprint. Now this fingerprint is from that faint handprint that was in the orange circle in the previous slide. With a little digital enhancement you can see these horizontal parallel dermal ridges in one of the fingers. The question I asked myself is, okay, can I find 
that type of confirming evidence on a stylized handprint, the ones they claim were drawn. Now, I had seen dermal ridges in many handprints around the county. In fact, here's an example of one from CalRIV 506. Lots of dermal ridging impressions. Conditions have to be optimal for that to occur. So the question then is, could we find dermal ridges on these stylized handprints? Because if they were indeed impressed by a human hand, maybe that residual evidence exists. And in fact, it does. This is the hand, this is the tip of the middle finger from that handprint that you saw in the yellow circle in a few previous slides, the stylized one, and off to the lower left, look carefully, you can indeed see the evidence of a fingerprint. So that tells us with some confidence that these are actual handprints, they've just been stylized a little bit, and that a human with intent impress that onto the rock. The question then becomes, how were they made? In other words, was the, were the lines painted on the hand and then impressed, or was the hand fully inked and then pigment removed by a fingernail or a stick to leave create these empty spaces for the design? So these blank spaces become a big clue the blank spaces between the pictographic lines. So I want you to look at that photo. I'm going to enhance it for you. And you'll notice there are tremendous volumes of dermal ridge impressions in those empty spaces. So that tells us for certain there was a thin film of paint existing when the hand was impressed. How is there a thin, a thin film of paint? Well. Two ideas, as I mentioned earlier, the blank spaces could have been created by scratching out the paint, or the paint was already there from maybe previous simple impressions, and then the artist merely drew lines on an already inked hand and impressed it on the rock. My current working hypothesis is that it was a process of removing the paint to reveal the lines. And if you look at the yellow arrow that I just popped on there, you can see that the white space between the adjacent red lines is rather consistent. Also, those two red lines, the one closest to the arrow tip in particular, is rather tapered. That suggests a pigment removal technique was employed. Now, whether pigment re removal was the only technique used or not, I don't have any idea. But after looking at many uh, examples of stylized handprints throughout the county and the southwestern United States, I tend to believe the removal process was more commonly used. Now, these stylized handprints occur at many localities in Southern California. Here's one example. In this example, in this cave shelter, it allows the white pigment to persist. So here's some very remarkable streaked handprints and stylized handprints used to make some sort of design. Here's another handprint from that same cave shelter, and it's really a treat to see white, and the only reason why it persists is because it's protected from the weather. Here's a black stylized handprint from the lower desert, where the desert Kauia were um, living. So these stylized handprints are an important variant of handprints in Southern California. Ken Hedges and I had the privilege of recording and writing about rock art on Rancho Wajito. And at this particular site, there are all three of the major pictographic styles in Southern California. And probably the featured anthropomorph shown here and now enhanced carrying what looks like an implement in their hand, up in the upper left, you'll notice there are some stylized handprints. Here's a close-up normal exposure and enhanced. No one at this time knows why they were stylized. Only the artist knows for sure. But they are an intriguing and interesting part of the rock art record of Southern California. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.